Hello Star Citizens, Buzzkiller here, and welcome back to my hangar. Now today CIG has released the new patch 1.1.2 into the Persistent Test Universe. And I wanted to go ahead and go over some of the changes that they've made, some of which aren't even on the patch notes. Now to start off, we have a new character model. Actually it's the same character model, but he's wearing a new flight suit. Looks like um, some light armor. Looks really good, actually. It's got some nice geometry to it. It's got some different textures, some different materials. Shining in places where you expect it to be, matte and others. But overall, it hasn't changed too much from the previous armor. So he has some leg pads there as well. And he's also wearing the cowl that you usually see him wearing when he's flying the Aurora. Now at first he was bald, then he got some hair, now he's wearing a hat. I guess he's a little self-conscious. <laughs> Another thing they've added is the breath. And if I'm quiet, you might hear him. Unfortunately, while in the hangar mod module, breath doesn't change. So you can sprint all you like, and it'll keep the same nice slow rhythm. They've done some. S okay, you also notice the sound as he's running is different. So they've improved some of the sound effects. Also, they've improved the prone animations. So that looks a lot better. I managed to get this to spaz out a little bit, actually. Um, if you press your free look button, I believe the default is G, to look around and then change your camera angle and let go. If you look up, <laughs> watch this. Herp, 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 and herp. <laughs> he gets a little crazy. But other than that, it looks really good. And I'll show you how that looks in space here in a little bit. So without further ado, let's go ahead and run the tutorial, and I'll go ahead and be quiet so you can get the full experience. Well, first let's sit down in the sim pod. And you notice we have the new tab, the basic flight training. So you click on that, and you, you can actually choose where you start. You start off on takeoff, of course, and you can cycle through the different chapters. But if you start on takeoff, it'll actually let you run through the entire thing. Once you've chosen your chapter, of course, hit your launch button and be prepared to wait. Be prepared to wait because loading takes a little while. So I'll go ahead and cut here. And when it comes up, we'll go through the tutorial. Again, I will not speak through the entire tutorial. Hey there, hustle on over. I'm waiting, Brooke. Let's go!
Still waiting. I'm Lucas Baramsko, but everyone knows me as Gilly. I've served in six squadrons and qualified on almost a dozen ships. So if you put in the time, I'll get you on the path to dogfighting with the best of them. We're gonna set you up in the ship on the landing pad over there. Hustle over and let's get going. Move it, move it, move it! Easy there, rookie. That's my ride. What are you doing? You're over there. What are you doing? You're over there! What are you, on break? Let's move it, Rook! First things first, take a look around your cockpit and familiarize yourself with the layout. It's imperative to quickly find and access specific controls. Last thing you want to be doing in a scrap is bringing up the instructions. You'll notice the majority of your systems are disabled. I'll be controlling when they're on and offline to simulate potential scenarios and combat situations. Let's get ready for takeoff. I'll do this step by step to show you how it's done. Systems, check. Engines check. Tower, permission for launch. Clear for launch. Copy that, Tower. All right, first I want to lift vertically until I'm just clear of the landing pad. Now that I'm clear, I can straight forward onto the taxiway. Now I square my ship up with the ceiling doors, ready for a vertical takeoff. Once you're aligned, the tower will open the doors. That's it. Once I clear out, it'll be your turn. Ready? I'm enabling your systems. We'll monitor your progress from up here. Clear for launch. Nice. You're clear of the pad. Okay, now straight forward onto the taxiway. If you need it, the tower should have lit up your path. Make sure you don't pitch or roll. It'll be tough to get back into proper alignment. Don't align yourself with the middle of the doors. You'd be surprised how many crews forget that the cockpit is not the center of the ship. The tower will open the doors once you're lined up. You're lined up.
Great job. I haven't seen many pull one off on the first try. I've just enabled your targeting system. Use it to target me. Good. When pursuing a target, Great, you're locked on. Remember, this is an autopilot, so you still have to steer. But you'll notice that once you're locked, your computer will continue to monitor my speed and adjust. It doesn't matter if I speed up slowly or stop fast. That, my friend, is the Spire. Isn't she a beauty? Moving on. Now this is my favorite part of training. The barrel roll. <laughs> so much fun. Rolling is a great way to orient your ship to fit through tight gaps or evade incoming fire. Now you give it a go. Nice one. Well, you seem to be able to handle your ship, so let's see if you can handle a bit of combat. Check your radar. You should have a contact. Don't worry, it's just a training drone. It handles just like the real thing, but its weapons are less than lethal. Saying that, they still pack a punch, so try not to take any hits if you don't have to. Use your targeting system to quickly target the closest enemy. Okay, now look at the top right of your hut. You should see the target displayed. This will show real-time damage, shield status, and a few other things. Shields are drawn as panels floating around the ship. They'll shrink as they weaken until they disappear completely. At that point, your shots will hit the hull and cause lasting damage. Now your weapons are online. Line up your target and fire when you're ready. Good shot. See its shields weakening on your hut? Yeah, it didn't like that. What are you waiting for? Go finish it off. Now you have a target. You'll have extra aim reticules. Those are predicted impact points, or pips. They'll show you where to shoot to hit a moving target. Notice you have multiple pips with varying lag. Each of those indicates a weapon on your ship. The computer's trying to compensate for the varying speeds between your ballistic and energy projectiles. Taking hits. Check your heart for shield and damage status. Good hit. Keep firing. Watch it, rookie. There you go. Keep on the pressure. Shields are down. Finish it off with a missile. Missile locking sensors are on the nose, so keep your target in front of you long enough to lock on. Good kill. On me, rookie. Let's go! Let's move on. Uh-oh! Looks like he had a friend. Take a look in your review camera. He's got lock. Missiles incoming. That hit took out your weapons. You'll have to hold out till they come back. Countermeasures are still online. Use them. Last missile was heat-seeking, so equip your flares. Helpful tip, don't boost after dropping one. Boosted thrusters are much hotter than a flare. Flares have a short lifetime. Don't be too quick to fire them. Another pro tip, countermeasures are fired backwards, so never fly the missile head-on, launch countermeasure, and expect it to work. He's got locked. Missiles incoming. 
Good. You got your guns back, but I'll need more time to get your missiles up. If the drone gets behind you, enter decoupled mode to disengage your main engines and allow you to spin your ship around while retaining your original vector. It's a great way to dissuade your pursuer, but make sure you've checked your path ahead first. Give it a try. Just remember to disengage when you're done. He's got locked. Missiles incoming. You're taking hits. Check your heart for shield and damage status. time to cool or they'll overheat he's got lock missiles incoming Got your missiles back. Take it out. Good kill. We're heading back to the landing pad to restock and refuel for the final part of your training. On me, rookie. Good back there, Kims. Let me guess, you're an Arena Commander fan. Should be close enough. Once landing mode's active, your heart's gonna swap out your combat systems for landing specific functionality. You can cycle through available landing pads the same as cycling through targets. Once you've targeted a landing pad, request permission to land. Go ahead and pick a landing pad. Your radar is replaced by the landing system. It'll guide you to your pad and help you perform a safe landing. You can use the automatic ETL landing procedure or do the whole thing manually. Make sure your ship stays within the bounds of the pad and keep your eye on your pitch and roll. Touchdown. Great work. While we're waiting, feel free to take a look at your ship's setup. In there, you'll see your weapon groups, shield configuration, and power distribution. Now, wouldn't mess around with them during training. Topped off. 
Let's get back out there. Think you can stay on my tail? If you need to get up to top speed in a hurry, try boosting. You can also use it to overpower your maneuvering thrusters in order to take tighter corners. Take off when you're ready. You do have a limited amount that takes time to replenish, so don't go nuts with it. If you need to cut your speed in a hurry, use your space brake. It's much quicker than dialing back your engines, and the moment you let go of it, you'll automatically accelerate back up to your previous speed. Think you can put all this together? Let's see. Still with me, kid? Good job. Now, one thing you need to understand, every ship's outfitted with systems to look out for you. That last sharp turn, you probably felt your ship clamp down on the speed. That's your G-safe system kicking in making sure that you aren't taking too many G-forces and blacking out. If you need to get that extra edge in turning, you can disable G-Safe, but be warned. An unconscious pilot turns to a dead one pretty quick. You also have Comstab, which adjusts your forward velocity so you can make controlled turns. Disabling Comstab will allow you to maintain your velocity in turns but you will drift wider. Think fast. Still with me? All right, I'm a little impressed. Race you to the spire. Hold on. I've got contacts inbound. Contact. Vandal fighter. Get ahead. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. All your systems are active. This is a live fire encounter. Mark your target. Copy that. I got the other. Good luck. Stay sharp. We've got more hostiles inbound. Looks like there's a glaive in the mix. That glaive's a recognized ace. Enemy designation is tank. We're gonna have to work together to take it down. Target the glaive! Good kill. Glaive's down. You're clear to engage the rest. Good luck. We're clear. Hell of a training session, huh? Danger. Radiation critical. I'm getting erratic power spikes from your ship. It must have hit your power plant. Your ship's loaded with military intel, so we can't let it fall into enemy hands. You'll have to initiate self-destruct before you eject. Close there, kid. Let's get you back to base. First round's on me.
Okay, so here we are back in the hangar. And I thought they did a pretty good job. That tutorial actually did a nice job of showing a new player how to control their ship. There's a lot of little issues like the control mappings. It didn't really detect sometimes which buttons so I had certain actions mapped to, but of course a new player is going to be using either a mouse and keyboard or a default setup at first, so yeah, I think they did pretty good there. It was really nice interacting with our first NPC. They did a good, did a good job with Gilly. Uh, he could get a little impatient at times, but that's to be expected. Of course, if I had to follow him over to his ship and watch him get in. That was pretty cool, seeing that animation from a third person's perspective. So, yeah, I think overall they did a good job. It really gets me excited to see what they'll do in the new Squadron 42 when that shows up later, hopefully this year. Okay, so for part two of the video, what I want to do is go through some of the changes that are and are not on the patch notes. And uh, I'm going to cut this up a little bit so uh, to save some time. So let's go to our first change. Okay, so one of the first changes I've found aside from the ones I've shown you already, is some new animations in the Retaliator. And if we go up to the second floor here, you can see we have these weapon racks. And these are actually now animated, so they'll pop out. Not the most useful animation, but still pretty interesting. And also, they've added animations to the escape pods, allowing you to open up at least the bottom two. The top won't open. And you can't actually get in, but you can see in there a little bit better. Looks pretty cool. I like the little molded pad there with the different textures. It's like you've got a little Aegis Dynamics logo there right above the use key on that red portion. Of course these are sleeping areas that double as escape pods so you've got looks like an oxygen supply there. Not bad. Next up we have the Redeemer. It looks like they've added some sound effects to the cockpit entry animation. Let me show you that real quick. And there you go. I think that was in there before. They were just broken for a while. But it's working again. exit animation or sound is also working. Here's another find in the hangar. Looks like they've added sound effects to the new door leading to the Persistent Universe elevator. on the landing pad and I found a few more additions. First off you notice we do have the breath on the visor and the breath actually does increase when you're moving around. Even just walking. And sprinting. And the longer you sprint the longer it takes for your breathing to settle down. Also, when you pull your weapon, notice it goes down into a low ready stance. Whereas before, he just kept it up all the time. And of course, by tapping the fire button, it brings it up into the high ready stance. And 
and then you have your standard aim down sight. They've also added the lean function. I'm not sure how useful that's actually going to be because you don't seem to lean very far. Let me try it out in here, see what happens. You don't lean very far. But I'm sure once they int implement the cover system, that'll probably be a little more useful. Also, if you look at the back of the gun, the power meter does actually work. It does have a counter showing how many shots you have left. I fired a few times, so I'm down to 55 rounds. 54. 53. That's nice. They fixed some of the animations in the prone. But unfortunately, when you aim down sights, you get this. Well, now it's not doing it. There it goes. This locked arm thing where you can't really move your weapon until. You can. If you pull up, and I mean, if you look back or look up as high as you can, it, get, it can get out of it. But as soon as you get close to the ground again, it locks back into that position so it's kind of annoying also it looks ridiculous from the outside watch his arms <laughs> he gets the rubber band man or Mr. Fantastic pose going <laughs> it is pretty cool how they have him cock his leg up into an actual that's actually how they teach you to aim from the prone in the military. Of course the roll is still in. Another nice thing they've added is the beginnings of the new push-pull system. Oops, I didn't mean to run that far. So while you're floating, if you hold the space bar, you'll put your hands out like so. Well, you'll also boost upwards. Thinking they should put a new animation there. But when you get to a, close to a surface, you tap that space bar. Oops, I tapped it twice. It's easier to see from an external view. Sort of tap the space bar. Oop. And he reaches out and grabs whatever is nearby. And it puts you into this sort of push-pull mode where you can move around. You can pull your weapon out. And also, if you tap, you see how I pushed away from the surface there. So you tap it once, you enter that grab mode. Then you tap again, and it actually pushes you away from the surface. Now here's, I haven't pressed the spacebar button. It doesn't automatically do it. You have to actually tap the spacebar to initiate it. Pretty cool. I'm trying to twist around. And I tried it from the kneeling position, and you do crouch, but you can't push off with your legs yet. Well, I say that, but then he actually tries to do it. It's kind of hit or miss, though, I think. Let me use the mag boots to lock on here. tap space. They see him trying to do it, but it's not actually working. But hopefully they'll have that all straightened out by the time we actually get the first person shooter module.
pretty cool. Well, Star Citizens, I think that about covers all the major things that I could find. I'm sure I missed something. But if I find anything major, I'll let you guys know in an update video. Until next time, this has been Buzzkiller. And if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that like or subscribe button. And I will see you guys in the verse.